Hello everyone, this is Akaim and welcome back to some more World of Warships and today we are saying goodbye to the Stores. The Tier 7 Russian Cruiser. I'm just going to say Russian just to kind of keep it neutral. But anyway, the Russian Cruiser finally going to go on to the Chopyov, which I'm definitely looking forward to. And I am a little bit sad to actually get rid of the Stores. Um... Uh, some of my friends were like, ah, oh, you should keep the stores, because you're actually really close to getting uh, the 9 million, and I really just want to move on. I mean, I can always come back and repurchase repurchase this ship, uh, especially if I really want to, but I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to moving on to the stores and possibly uh, eventually the Donchikoi and then the top tier, which I actually can't think what the top tier line is, the Moskva. I'm definitely looking forward to the Moskva. But anyway, <clears throat> let's quickly look over her stats. Survivability, 32,200. Armor is pathetically thin. Let's go ahead and actually take a look at the armor. Look, you have this giant citadel from the very back of the guns all the way to the very front of the guns. And this is only 75 millimeters. Bow armor... 16 millimeters. Yes, you can get ricochets, and I would probably recommend it. Try to do it that way because that's going to be the only way you can prevent yourself from actually getting citadeled. But honestly, there's not much really protecting your ship. So you got a player kind of at a distance at all times. It's, uh, that armor uh, viewer is actually really super nice to have. It really does portray the weakness on the ship. Main battery, you have four turrets, uh, a lot better than the Bajani, which had three turrets, triple guns, reload time is 8 seconds, turn time is 22.8 seconds, this version is very tight, 138 meters at max distance, at max range of 16.8 kilometers, max HE damage is 2200, which is actually pretty good, uh, AP 3300, and when you can... Use your AP. Your AP does pretty good damage, especially since the very tight dispersion and very high rate of fire. Your AP can do quite a bit of damage, even though that your guns are only 152 millimeters. So just take that into comparison. The Cleveland has 152 millimeters. Yes, the Russian line doesn't get anything close to like 203s till I believe at about the tier 10. Actually, let's take a look. I think it is the Moskva that does get the much larger. Okay, so the Donskoy gets a little bit bigger, but all cruisers, the American, the German, and the Japanese line get 203 millimeters at tier 7 and up starting off for at least the U.S. line. But the Moskva gets 220, so that's one nice benefit of the Moskva over the other cruiser line. So, but unfortunately, you'll kind of have to sit out with this uh, very small, smaller caliber shells. But they're very quick reload, and that's one nice benefit. Secondaries, there's not a lot. There's four uh, dual 100 millimeters, and they have a range of three of 4.7 kilometers with a reload time of 3.8 seconds. So they're all right, you have two on each side, one, two, three, four, yes, obviously. Torpedoes are, you're pretty much, oh crap, I got way too close, fire torpedoes. You have two, one on port, one on starboard, four torpedoes each, reload time is 101 seconds. Turn time is six seconds, max damage is 15,100, so they're not bad. But they're more of, oh crap, I got way too close. So only use them if you really need to. Uh, don't go into battle with the intent of using your torpedoes. You will die very, very, very quickly. AA defense is all right. Uh, you have four dual 12.7 millimeters. And I really do like how the uh, Russian AA guns are. They're all very compact. While the American and the Japanese, they're all a little bit more open. Uh, s then you have the six quad 37 millimeters, and these things are really badass looking. I really have to say. And then your secondaries will work as AA as well as most things do. Now, beautiful thing about Russian cruisers are the 
fact that they are very fast. 35.5 knots max speed. But here comes the issue. Turning circle radius is 900 meters. So very, very slow to turn. That is the huge issue with Russian cruisers. Very, It takes a very big circle just to get turned around. Rotor shift time is nice, 7.1 seconds. So it does have a quick rotor shift time. But that slow turning circle radius, that big turning circle radius is a slight issue. Concealment uh, without any camo or upgrades to, for the captain. Detectability by range on C is 13.3 kilometers. So you do have quite a bit of distance. You have about three kilometer distance before you can fire. Yeah, about 3.5 kilometers. So you do have a decent and range by air is 8.1 kilometers. So pretty nice. Now, as far as modules, uh, it's a normal. I went for the steering gears modifications just so she can turn a little bit quicker. Uh, even though the turn, turning circle radius is real pain in the butt. But there's also a possibility of going for propulsion modification. Since your turning circle radius is horrendous, you but could go for the propulsion and allow your ship to speed up and slow down a lot quicker. So that is viable as well. But everything else, I would probably stay the same. Um, your secondaries are terrible but your AA is decent so I mean yes you could possibly buff your AA but yeah I would stick with the guns because the guns are really what you really what you would want and HE is what you will be firing quite a bit in HE with I should point this out my captain is a I believe 13 point captain and he does have Demolition Expert, which does increase the chance of fire by 3%, which, if we go look at the percentage, gives us a chance of fire 15% of the times for each shell hit. So, fire works really well, and as you will see in the replay, fire just brings down battleships very easily. So, I have to say, I do like the stores. Uh, there were a few... Russian cruisers that I did not like. Um, I will have to say the Kirov was kind of iffy. The Bajani was definitely a lot better, but the Stores, even though with the weak armor and very, you know, you can be deleted very quickly, I do like the Stores. It is fun to play. Uh, I do have a fun time with her, but I'm definitely looking forward on to the Chopyev. So we'll see how that goes. I've not heard good things. But anyways, without any further ado, I will see you guys in the replay. See you there. Hello everyone, welcome back to the replay with the shores, and we are playing on Estu... not Estuaries, what am I talking about? We are playing on Trident, and we are playing Epicenter, which is the new game mode that has come out, where you control... try to control the center. On our team we have a Independence and a Maki, two Colorados, a New Mexico, Hipper, Mogami, Pensacola, Shores, Fabuki, Hatsuharu, and Agnavoy. On the enemy team, there is a Rujo, a Magi, Tuca New Mexico, New Orleans, Hipper, ARP, Ashigara, Bajani, Fabuki, Sims, and a Blishkovica. And I will have to say, this is actually a very epic game. It came really down to the wire. It came very close. We'll see how it goes. And one other thing I probably should point out is I really do like the stores. I think she's a fantastic ship, uh, especially for her tier. And we'll see how the Chapiev compares next to the shores. Hopefully it's a little bit better, but we'll see. So at this point in time, the enemy team is actually doing a really good job. They are currently capping the center, which is where you really want to go for, because the center controls the outer rings. And our team is just now making their way into the center. So we'll see how this goes. I keep saying that. I don't know why. But we say good night now. And you can see that I'm not really wanting to show a lot of broadside. Especially since there is the good night now. And there's a enemy hipper. So that's the issue with the Russian cruiser line. Is their armor is pathetically uh, thin. Even thinner than the German cruiser line and everyone remembers when it first came out it was horrible uh it used to be the lowest as far as actually armor plating on the sides 
So we do get a fire on the hipper, which means he will probably use his damage control. Hopefully we can get at least maybe another fire. That would be nice. It looks like he's actually still running with that fire. Wow, that's actually kind of interesting. He's actually being intelligent, I will have to say. Now, we do have a New Mexico kind of coming up on the side. And I really don't want to be showing a New Mexico my side. So I'm going to stop backing up. We're going to pull forward. Now, you can see the enemy team is doing a fantastic job. Two of their Gnizen Owls are, move are in the center. They have at least a destroyer in there and a couple of their cruisers are coming in as well. So I think it's a good time to try to help out the team with the enemy battleships as much as possible. Now, alpha damage, the stores does, I mean, it's okay. It's not, it won't really be the known for high penetration, but with my captain skill that I have on it, which increases the fire chance, and the high reload rate means that I get a lot of fires very quickly, and this... At least this Gnizen now will be the wonderful victim for us, and we will possibly be setting a lot of fires. Let's see how this volley goes in. Hopefully we can set a fire on the first charge, and hopefully he'll be one of those newbie battleship players. I doubt it, where he'll knock it out. We'll see how this goes. Now I do pull away, and it looks like... Oh! Another fire. So now he has two fires burning. He has to use damage control if he doesn't want to take all that extra damage because two fires can take I think it's over a thousand points of damage per tick something like that so yeah very dangerous now his damage control is off and that's going to lead him susceptible to another batch of fires and he does not like me so he's firing at me we get him on fire again and this is kind of how you have to play Russian cruisers, is kind of keeping the distance. And you'll see that I'm demonstrating this fairly well. Now, kind of a side note, up north, and just happened actually, the enemy carrier just took out our friendly carrier. Which is not good, because this will come back and haunt us and bite us in the ass. So we set a second fire on that Gnizen now. And I switched targets to the other guys now to kind of spread out the damage. I want to do as much fire damage as I can. And this is kind of a good, beautiful thing about the stores and all Russian cruiser line is their uh, fast reload rate and their high fire chance. Now there is the ARP Ashigara. Might as well open up on him. Try to get rid of him if at all possible. He's very low in health. Uh, this time we should do it. Yes, there we go. We just got our first kill of the game. The Ashi ARP Ashigar is now down. And now I can start focusing on these Gnizen now. And this is really kind of what you kind of have to do whenever you're in a Russian cruiser. You're, you really can't get up close like other cruisers. Uh, because your armor just will not tank the hit at all. So, you kind of have to play this long-range sniper that's in that's my opinion um it really comes down to the armor effect yeah sometimes it's actually good to get get in there because some of your armor can actually deflect shells but not very often and in this instance uh we got another fire on that Gnizen now he probably is pissed at me i would be pissed i hate like kutuzovs i hate kutuzovs with a passion but this Gnizen now is going to go down to the enemy friendly torpedoes. There we go. So the teams are a little bit even. Uh, looks like the enemy team has one more ship than we do. Thanks to their carrier, actually. We lost our carrier, which, like I said, is going to come back and bite us in the ass. Now, I will have to say, like I was saying, um, the store's armor can bounce a few shells, but even while angled you'll still get penetrated especially with German battleship guns and this is one beautiful thing about the Russian cruiser line line is using the spotter craft now for anyone that does not know I hate the spotter craft I hate this angle it just for me it makes it very hard to actually get my shots where I want them as you can see 
yes, the Ballistic Vesca did turn away, but I still have issues actually gauging the shots. Now, this guy dies now. I to use his damage control, and we got another fire on the uh, Ballistic Vesca, which should help our Ognivoy, but I doubt he's going to survive. So I do switch targets to this good nice. And now that's just kind of sitting in the middle, kind of leaving him as a empty target. And our team is starting to melt away. We just lost two ships. We lost our Ognavoy and I think another ship as well. But this good nice now is getting very low on health. Uh, it looks like he did is using his healing. And yeah, I do not want to get hit. <laughs> it's going to leave him. Ooh, it looks like he took torpedoes. Get another fire. And the Fubuki. Good job, Fubuki. He took out the enemy. Good nice and now. Fantastic. Fantastic indeed. And now here comes the Amagi. And keep keep this Megami kind of... Keep an eye out for him. Because he's actually going to be... Uh, I don't want to say instrumental, but he's going to be around. So... We're not doing so hot. The enemy team has controlled the center fairly strongly uh, for the majority of the game. And it looks like they've just now captured the very center, which is going to help them gain points, which is not good. But our battleships are currently fighting with the enemy Amagi. He is very low on health. The Amagi is a great ship, don't get me wrong, but the armor is weak. It's more of a battle cruiser, so the penetration value is very low. It's very low or very high. It's very easy to get penetrated with the Amagi. So you really have to be smart with how you play the ship. Now the Blitzkovica just went down to the friendly Amagi, which was fantastic. Good riddance. There is still a enemy destroyer um, out there somewhere. And we switch over to the Hipper because the Amagi was behind the mountain. But guess who decides to pop back up? It's the enemy Amagi again. Let's see how many fires we can set. There we go. Another fire. And if I was this battleship, I would be pissed. And crap. The enemy carrier just took out our friendly uh, destroyer. No, not destroyer. I'm trying to think who. Our friendly battleship, actually. And the Bliskvika took out our enemy, our friendly battleship, which is not good. Now, Fubuki did appear just north of us. And we also just took out the enemy Amagi. So, I mean, teams are still a little... Well, actually, it's still one-sided. They're still winning quite a bit. Now, the Megami is being very helpful. He's trying to take on the enemy Fubuki, but... Honestly, there's not much we can do without being able to see him, so I do switch my targets over to someone else. And it looks like the enemy carrier, which the enemy carrier did a fantastic job in this game. Uh, he, I think he was one of the top, I believe. So, switch over to the New Orleans. New Orleans is the tier 8 uh, American cruiser. Not a bad ship. Uh... But not really good if you're broadside like this New Orleans, which two Citadels dropped him all the way to 578 points of health. Shouldn't be a big issue here soon. There we go. That is the third kill of the game. Fantastic. Now the Hipper is going to be an issue because his shells can actually do sizable amount of damage. But fortunately, it looks like we actually got a bounce, which was very, very nice. But you can kind of see what's going to happen. We have no control of the ring. We're not getting any points. There's still a enemy carrier. And for some odd reason, I don't know why I'm not able to get a Citadel. The Bajoni, it's a nice ship. But just like the Shores, it has a very uh, weak Citadel. So very easy to penetrate. And we should be able to penetrate this Bajoni. Let's hope we can get... Citadel? Nope. Getting over penetrations. That's not good. Hmm. Now the enemy carrier is actually going after our friendly Fubuki. I believe that's left. He's done two kills. And you see the Ruho has taken four kills. And I think he's actually just took out the friendly Fubuki. Which 
gave him Kraken Unleashed. So not good. There is still two enemy cruisers. There is the Hipper, the Bajani. There's also a enemy battleship, but we haven't seen him. It's that New Mexico that we saw at the very beginning of the map that started to come up beside us. So yeah, this this is not going well for me for our team at the very least. Now I'm kind of trying to keep my distance. I'm, wor I'm concerned about the hipper, but at the same time, we need to get in there. I mean, we need to actually capture, but there's not really much we can do. I'm trying to take out this enemy Bajani. We do get a fire. And the Megami is actually doing fantastic. He, I think the Megami just took about 3,000 points of health off him. And, ooh, so close to actually getting those torpedo hits. Now, there we go. There we go. There is our fourth kill. And the enemy Bajani just took out our friendly Megami. Crap. Which leaves just me. And, like I said, the enemy carrier is actually a decent carrier. He's a dis decent carrier captain. And guess who's going to be focused on next? Now, the stores has all right AA. It's not the greatest around, greatest thing in the world. Nothing compared to the American or even the Russian, or sorry, the German cruiser. And yep, here comes torpedo planes but fortunately we have our uh, anti-air cooldown defensive AA is off cooldown and I believe I do actually use it oh. yep I, I do use it even though the replay is not showing it but unfortunately the stores turns like a brick and so we do eat one but hey that's better than nothing but look at the points yeah so unfortunately, we did suffer a defeat, but it was still a really good game. Really good game with the stores, even though we did lose. Highly unfortunate, but it happens. Uh, we received 303,508 silver, 1,949 XP, 98 free XP, plus whatever these medals are. I, the, there are secret medals that World of Warships is doing, and th they're very odd. You have to do something very specific to actually get them and no one really knows you're supposed to talk with your other the other players and try to figure this out i don't really pay attention uh damage wise 95,411 183 shell hits seven plane shot down two in two incapacitation four kills 15 fires two citadels and one defended base cap and i really wish i had sitted that bajani this game well, probably would have kept the same because we were losing on points, but still probably could have helped the Megami. That would be beneficial. And as you probably could have guessed, I was top of the tier with four kills and a base XP of 1,237. That would have put me fifth in the enemy team. So really good job, especially with the uh, friendly Megami, who was actually right behind me with 1,104 uh, base XP. He did a fantastic job. Uh, as far as damage is concerned, fires 41,224. So almost half our damage output was due to fires. And this is why I like and loathe the Russian cruiser line, especially the uh, Mikhail Kutuzov. I hate that. Uh, it basically comes down to me and Interpret's getting bombarded by three Kutuzovs at the same time and just constantly being on fire. Pissed me off. But still, fun ship. Um, I would highly recommend going for um, Demolition Expert to increase your fire chance because, as you can see, we did pretty good sizable chunk of damage just due to fires. And unfortunately, like I said, we did take out the New Orleans, the Bajani, the Amagi, and the ARP Ashigara. Even though we did very minimal amount of damage. With the Gnize now, we did about 44,000 points of damage. So, yeah, pretty good. And after everything is said and done, we earned 255,823 silver. So, 
this is kind of a good ship to actually work with if you can survive the battle and put out that damage. So you can make a profit with this ship. But yeah, I'm going to miss the stores. I re I'm hoping the uh, Chapiev is going to be just as fun. But we'll see how this goes since you're jumping from uh, from a five tier 5 to, to tier 9 battles to tier 10 battles. So you're jumping up all the way to tier 10, which includes the Yamato and those big heavy guns. But we'll see how this goes. Well, this is going to be it for these stores. I do highly recommend the ship. It is a fun ship to play. And I hope you guys enjoy the vote video. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you like what you saw, hit the like and subscribe button. You guys have a great and fantastic day. Zai Jen.